Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. Gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. I am Skits, and I'm here along with Tom and Oscar. What is going on, boys? What's going on, fellas? What's going on, man? I just, we just say, I just, we just witnessed something for life. It was really for life. <laughs> the only oh, thing man. that's for life is the Bullet Club. No. No, no. <laughs> for once, I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I I respect the Bullet Club. For once, for tonight, I'm going to say, fuck the Bullet Club. <laughs> Bullet Club, four, four, four life. And thank God we didn't see no Bo Dallas. You know what? Well, I'm going to get to that in a little you bit. Know, because there's, quick, quick. There is, there's a new streak going on that we'll get to later in the show. Oh, God. I just want to real, really, I, I want to get into Raw real quick. I just want to say how Raw, how terrible it was tonight. Like, it probably was one match that was good tonight, and that was Cesaro versus Jack Swagger. And and that really was no yeah. main event type of match. I, I thought it was better than terrible. I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I thought it was better than last week. I mean, uh, you know, we'll get more into that. But tonight, I thought Cesaro and Jack Swagger had a solid match. We'll get more into that. And uh, Sheamus and Randy Orton had a solid match. Uh, um, like, I mean, to me, it seemed like the whole fucking Sheamus, you know, Randy Orton match was like a been there, done that, seen that type of shit. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's funny. We're nearby SummerSlam, and you just popped in my head, Skits, that th- this was a SummerSlam main event a couple of years ago, and I remember I was at Staples Center. It was a WWE title match, and you just popped out of my head, like, oh, shit, and they actually wrestled today. <laughs> just popped out of my head. But, yeah. But, uh, anyways, I kind of agree with Tom. I don't think it was that terrible. I mean, I was actually looking forward to this Raw because all these rumors about this NWO reunion and all this stuff, then you hear maybe Roddy Piper might show up. When Mr. Wonderful is showing up, then, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, to, let's go um, and I'll talk about Raw real quick. Uh, basically, Raw started off uh, with uh, the best manager in professional wrestling and the beast in current, the man who beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania to get his first loss there. Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come down, and they uh, basically uh, cut a promo on John Cena to hype up the uh, the uh, matchup coming this Sunday, which your boy Skits and Oscar will be there. Looking forward to it; it should be fun. Uh, but yeah. all I have to say, uh, Heyman can do it all. Uh, he can even rap. Uh, got to You gotta love his rap. Um, what do you guys think about the uh, the the opening promo? Well, to me, it just seemed like the the same thing when the last time Lesnar came in. You know, it's basically so, talking about Cena, how he's going to hurt John Cena. It's just I'm not no disrespect to Brock. I mean, no disrespect to Heyman, but it just feels like the same thing. To like we saw two or three weeks ago, the last time we saw Brock Lesnar. I thought it was you know, when Paul Heyman always goes out there, even if he basically says the same thing. I'm always entertained by his promos. Um, he just has a way of, you know, grabbing your attention. Like I said, even though he might say basically the same thing, he'll still grab your attention each time. And you know, him and Lesnar right now, it's the perfect dynamic. You know, Lesnar just stands there and looks intimidating, and Heyman just speaks for him. So I thought, you know, it was another good way to start off Raw. 
because, you know, it kept my attention, actually. So yeah. I liked it. I'll always enjoy Paul Heyman promos. Yeah, you um, gotta love Paul Hammond promos, and 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 you gotta love that uh, his new DVD. If you don't have it, you must get that thing. I actually bought it uh, off of iTunes. So if you don't want to leave your house, you can get off of iTunes for like fourteen ninety nine. You can rent it too for three ninety nine. So go check that out. It's worth it. It's like two hours and something. It's pretty damn good. I think it's the best DVD that they dropped for a while. So, but yeah, yeah. Um, also, your boy, Kane, or Corporate Kane, made his return, and, uh, he basically, uh, put Roman Reigns in another handicap match. Now, I, I have a problem with this handicap shit. I feel like we see a handicap match every week. If it's not on Raw or SmackDown, it's like, what's going on, uh, you know, creative? You know, you guys got something else better? You know, we see the same shit. If it's not Dean Ambrose in the handicap match, it's Roman Reigns, like, Shit's getting old already, to me, at least. I mean, you know. I have a quick question for you guys before you guys um, talk about uh, the whole handicap match thing that's going on. So, if Daniel Bryan never got injured, do you think the show was to be together, yes or no? Uh, uh, possibly. That's, that's, a very, that's a good question. I'd say... Probably, see, probably yes. Yeah, probably yeah. yes because yeah, because look, they were Red Hot as a, as a baby face team, a stable, you know, and I couldn't see them breaking up anytime soon. But it just seems like the whole Seth Rollins thing, he had to do it. They got to do something different. So yeah, yeah I, 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 not saying that it's a bad thing, and I know it's part of the storyline of you know, you have Triple H and Stephanie, you know, like they have uh. Seth Rollins as their, like, golden guy right now, you know, and you barely see Dean Ambrose in, like, singles matches that actually matter. You know, you barely see Roman Reigns in singles matches. It's always, like, tag team matches or some handicap type of bullshit. Like, I mean, I, I'm I'm starting to get sick of it. That's just me. Well, well I, they, I think we're seeing a lot of handicap matches and tag team matches with Roman Reigns because – they're trying to, like, still build him up as this really big threat. You know, if they just did a one-on-one -on -one match, it wouldn't seem like he's doing anything special. But when they put him in a handicap match and he wins it, it's like, whoa, he just beat, you know, two guys instead of just one, you know? If he were one out there and just faced Ryback and well, what won, about Dean? it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But because Dean he is on a whole different level of Axel, you know, it seems like more of a big deal. And the whole thing with Dean Ambrose is, you know, he's been in some singles matches, but his whole thing is just going after Seth Rollins. And it's I think it's working perfectly. You know, I don't agree with the match stipulation that happened on SmackDown, which was a lumberjack match that he chose for SummerSlam. I don't, Who's I don't get that. Shit? Who's writing this shit? Who in the fuck came up with the brilliant idea and said, let's little, do a fucking lumberjack match at a fucking pay-per-view? You fucking idiot. Well, unless, I, well, unless, they're gonna keep dragging, unless they're going to keep going with this feud to a uh, night of champions and then maybe end it off at Hell in the Cell. That's, you know what? I was saying either a cage match or Hell in the Cell. I mean, why did they have a gimmick match anyways? I, I, you know... I don't know. Well, well, but anyway, so if you I guys, think it's look, thing, if you guys look at the story, I think it's been. I think it's been okay. All three guys are staying relevant. You know, Roman Reigns is in the title picture. Dean Ambrose is going after Seth Rollins. They're still in the main event picture, even though they're not going after the title. So all three guys are staying relevant so far, and I think it's going to stay that way. Yeah, and I want to go back to that stipulation. Uh, I kind of understand why they did it, if you really think about it. Look, every time Dean Ambrose goes after Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins tends to run away. So you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta put a, a lumberjack match to do that. You know what would have been Seth better? Run away. It would have been better if yeah, he put the briefcase on the line or something. Well, maybe they'll do if, that at like Night of Champions or something. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say right now. Maybe Night of Champions that might happen because after SummerSlam, this dude's not gonna end at SummerSlam. He's gonna continue yeah. on. 
like back like I remember a while back uh, on we me and me and the guys we talked about you know this this storyline could be going on for like a while you know and these guys you know two two uh, top former independent guys you know you know I'm pretty sure a lot of people are enjoying this what they're saying but um, what else happened on Raw tonight um, basically Roman Reigns he. Got the win and a disqualification uh, going against uh, Ryan Baxel. But uh, Seth Rollins and Rob Van Dam meet up again. I feel like I've seen no, this match. No, it's the first time. I feel like first I've seen this happened. match. I feel like I've seen this match well, again. Remember, after last week there was a poster to wrestle, but then uh, they they niche RVD and then he put in he slid. I could have sworn they, they like wrestled before. I don't I don't know. If, 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 am I tripping? If they they might have, you know, they might have done it like after Seth Rollins turned. I think it was uh, on SmackDown or something. Shido. Yeah, maybe, but you know, they were supposed to do it last week, and then you know, Van Dam got replaced by uh, Heath Slater, so they're just kind of doing it again this week. Um, but you know, this was an okay match. But the funniest part came after the match when Seth Rollins was going up the ramp and. Uh, Dean Ambrose was disguised as one of the presents on the stage and jumped out of it and attacked Seth Rollins. That was that was hilarious. Yeah. Fucking Dean. And fucking Seth Rollins runs like a bitch. I... <laughs> yeah. But I'm just looking forward to see what happens Sunday. Um, I'm just hoping to see a, a great match between those two because those two guys are Two, two talented dudes. So, but yeah, uh, Seth Rollins got the victory, of course. Uh, now, th- this is the match that um, I actually mentioned, you know, when we first came on air. Jack Swagger and Cesaro, the team that used to be known as the Real Americans, go at it. And I think this match right here between these two is better than the past ones that they had. I don't know if uh, you guys agree or what you guys' thoughts on the match. Uh, probably. I mean, even to start to something stupid, like, not, not not make it obvious, like, example, uh, you know, he mixed him up and does the uppercut. Well, he did a little different. He used his knee instead, you know. Cesaro tried to do something different, not to make it obvious. Um, but I uh, give it up to both guys. They did, they did a great match. I was... At first, I was thinking, Skip, you were going to come down and say, what the fuck did you do with Cesaro, you know? <laughs> so. I was kind of hot, you know, that Cesaro um, had no music, you know. They kind of treat him like a little bum. I wasn't mm-hmm. feeling it. But uh, Cesaro and him, they put on a hell of a match. You know, Cesaro is a fucking talented dude. Looking forward to see what happens. Uh, you know, we, we've been hearing a lot of talks about him turning face. So I wonder what's going to happen with that and... Hopefully he still, you know, does what he does. Yeah, hopefully, you know, WWE just finds something good for Cesaro to do because he deserves way better than to be, you know, in a match against Jack Swagger that has no point to it, you know? You got to give Jack Swagger credit on uh, that uh, reverse that he did to get uh, yeah Cesaro in that uh uh, well, Jack, Jack Swagger and Cesaro have uh, have good chemistry in the ring together. Yeah, to you know, they always put on uh, very good quality matches. They seem to click together. Um, yeah. You know, and they do have some Former tag style. team partners, you know, they should have fucking chemistry. So, but, yeah. uh, I have a question that I kind of wasn't feeling at whatsoever. What, what do you guys feel about this uh, face-to-face, you know, Bray Wyatt, Chris Jericho thing? I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, it, it wasn't your normal yeah. type Bray Wyatt, Chris Jericho promos, you know? Well, they tried to change it in a way, but um, I wasn't feeling this either. Like, so, like at first when it began, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? But, yeah, I like what Bray Wyatt had to say about um, that he, he remember seeing him in his dreams and shit, like seeing some creepy-ass shit. I was, like, laughing. I was like, God damn, Bray Wyatt, love you, bro. <laughs> and, and having... Chris Jericho replied with an like you know an angry tone. I mean, 
That was actually pretty good. That's how it is to me, but I don't like the whole, um, you have to sit in the same I, room and shit. <laughs> you know, I am hoping that they don't do that shit again, because that shit is a fail. I hope the WWE uh, creative learned from that shit, because that shit was a fail. I mean, the whole room thing was bad. I'm mean, talking about the whole Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho, you know. That was actually great. I don't know. I'm not with the whole face to face thing. I don't know. It's it just me. I like the whole in ring thing. You know, it's keep it original. It's like do that trash. That shit was trash to me. That, that that's that's just me. But who am I? I'm just a fan. Yep. Um. But next up, uh, you got AJ Lee going against Miss uh, Eva Marie. She can suck my balls. <laughs> and you know, of course, Paige had to come down, interrupt the match, ended up costing AJ Lee the match when Eva Maria got a roll up pin. Have you guys noticed how many times in the past like month or so in the WWE have there been distraction wins? You had it last week with Heath Slater and Seth Rollins. You had it this week with Paige and AJ. And then Paige you also and AJ, had that's- it- I know Paige and AJ, theirs has been going on for a while. I'm kind of, I kind of don't like this new Paige, but then I like her at the same time. Um, yeah, I like it. I'm just waiting for her to turn full heel. Like she's like Paige is interesting. You know, she's acting like she's like obsessed over AJ, but she's really just like some crazy like check. Like I said, uh, I think I said last week. It it reminds me of the whole Mickey James uh, Trish Stratus feud in a way. Yeah, like, you know, the thing is, I like Paige. It's just that she's annoying to me, and she's doing a good job because heels are supposed to make you hate, hate them. So I'm starting to hate Paige. That's a good thing, though. Paige is doing a good job. You know, that's what the heels are supposed to do. They're supposed to make you hate them, and she's starting to make me hate her. But uh, i got to give her credit on her mic work tonight. Definitely stepping her game up. Uh, I don't think this is going to be over once Paige... Paige can low-key uh, come up with the W at SummerSlam. Don't be surprised. And this uh, storyline can keep going. going on? Maybe, but I'm just hoping um, their match on Sunday, it goes uh, it goes better than their one at Battleground because I was, I was pretty disappointed by the one at Battleground. I'm pretty sure Paige was too. Yeah. And you know what? I, I just can't wait for us. I just hope this... I, I kind of want this feud to continue, but at the same time, I don't want it to continue with the whole Paige acting like she's her friend thing. Why not give some hate? So let's just some hate between the I two, I think she's know? about to turn full hill after SummerSlam. She has to. Yeah. I mean, I think the best way, you got to give her the strap, and then let's make this his shit hatred. I like how the whole thing when AJ went crazy and went after uh, Eva Marie. Why not show that to Paige? Go crazy on Paige, you know, or both go crazy at each other. You know, I hope this will lead to a, a crazy ass match at at, um, at Night of Champions the two, like a, some kind of really crazy gimmick match. But um, yeah, you know, we we can see, we can we know these two could go crazy, but we need to go crazy at each other. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing a submission match with those two. That could probably happen. <laughs> they both yeah. work. What they need to do is, um, you know, this feud is going to be over eventually. They need to start building up other divas to start. It's funny that you mention that. You know, because where where, where the, the hell is them? And don't be don't be building up Eva Marie. No, don't no, no. Be no. Building up. I don't know, know if you heard. I, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull pull an Oscar off real quick. I don't know. If, I don't know if you heard, but uh, they um, are talking about uh, having uh, Charlotte lose her title at the NXT pay per view or special show, and um, she'll get called up. Nah, you know way what? way too early. And I hey, think you know WWE. I think WWE even knows that. It, this, this way, is what I read. Too early. Charlotte is still. You know, Charlotte has improved, you know, leaps and bounds, but it's way too early to bring her up. Just, I think she's just, going to be down in NXT just for what I a read. while. Probably not true, because 25% of the stuff that we read 
is uh is true. So <laughs> um but um how about you know big you get girls like Natalia and you know Naomi back in the scene, you know? Put them back yeah, in the scene. You need you need like Naomi back, you know, we haven't seen her, Cameron. You know, start, Naomi need the girls fucking Emma. braids looking real yeah, ratchet out start, there. Yeah, start rebuilding Emma because <laughs> You know, they completely just botched her whole um, debut on the main roster, putting her with Santino. And then, of course, the whole thing with her getting arrested kind of just, you know, derailed her for a little bit. Emma, I think uh, she was getting, uh, what's uh, fucking AJ's finisher called? Uh, AJ was putting her finisher on her. That's the last time we saw Emma. Black Widow? Yeah, the Black Widow. That's the last time we saw fucking Emma. That was a while back. But um but yeah. Um let's move on from the Divas. Yeah. Oh, just yeah, one more speaking, thing. Speaking I, of just, Divas. Just, just one more thing about the Divas. AJ did, beat the shot out of Eva Marie after the fucking <laughs> at, <laughs> Yes, at, that was that was what I wanted to see. It's just Eva Marie get the shit kicked out of her. Yeah. And uh Everybody speaking speaking of Eva that. Marie, um NXT last week, she was in the match against Bailey, oh, and man. the NXT crowd, as you guys know and most people know, they're a pretty vocal crowd. They're kind of like an indie crowd. You know, they'll tell it like it is. They'll cheer for whoever they want. They'll make stars, and they were none too kind to Eva Marie, and apparently there were reports um, from different websites, and I was also listening to a couple of um, podcasts where people said that Eva Marie, after her match against Bailey, uh, went into the back and was crying, like legitimately, because of the way the crowd was reacting toward her. And somebody hey, said, you know, if you, can't handle, if you can't handle NXT crowd reactions, you shouldn't be in the WWE. Yeah, I mean, you can't handle the business, period. You can't handle the fucking fans. You do your fucking, you know, that's part of your job. You're an actor, basically, yeah. too. You're an actor too, you know. You know, you know WWE, don't like needs you. To do, WWE needs yeah. to fire. WWE needs to fire Eve Marie and Cameron, and then they need to bring in Candice LeRae and Veda Scott. Candice LeRae <laughs> can come over here before she goes over there. But um, yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. Candace. I mean, well, my, oh yeah. Look, Tom, I I I knew about this whole Eve Marie thing in NXT for a while, ever since the tapings, and I read what happened. I was like, holy shit! So I got to see this and. And then he, I'm, I'm surprised WWE even shared it on NXT. But you guys didn't let me get my thoughts about Charlotte because you guys are a little Russian going on. But uh, I agree with Skits in a way. It's kind of like you have the internet rumors. They, they're saying that, oh, yeah, Charlotte's going to get called up in. But I'm not going to buy it yet. But if they, if they are really planning to bring in Charlotte, I mean, I feel like it's a little too soon to me because – I, I just feel like as soon as they, they debut her, what she's going to do, you know? I, I, mean, I don't see her getting I mean, a title picture. I mean, hold on. Don't forget this. They did sign her fucking dad, for, and they have nothing to do with him. Nothing. So that is the perfect thing to do is put Ric Flair with his daughter, and there you go. And you got to bring Natalia back in if you want to put some fucking classics on for the fucking females. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, it's just all talk right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so anyway, the divas. We had um, as a, Bella the most Steph- interesting the the most interesting segment of the night. Brie I want to get Bella you guys' Steph- opinion on this. So of course we had Stephanie. Uh, she announced that she had a confession that uh, she was going to announce to the WWE universe, and she came out with uh, Daniel Bryan's physical therapist. Uh, Megan, and this woman was breaking down, and then she claimed that Daniel Bryan was having an affair. You know, let me tell WWE. you this. Before the whole thing started, you can already tell what's going to happen. So yeah. it really didn't impress me. Like, you, WWE you're like, a I mean, from me, line. watch wrestling all these years, I mean, you can tell what's going to happen before it happens. And I'm sitting here like, oh, well, she's going to pull that one off. And let's let you guys know, uh, the woman who uh, apparently uh, was uh, the so-called, you know, therapist, 
she uh actually uh is she trains at Lance Storm's um academy. So uh she's actually she's actually in the business as a wrestler too, so look out for that chick. Uh, um her name is uh Chelsea Green. Uh, known as uh Jada. Yeah. Um well this is my thought. I kinda see this coming then this kind of brought up my head. Remember in TNA, Claire Lynch? You yeah. know her name, right? Claire Lynch? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of yeah. remind me of that. Like, whoa. So everybody this... everybody was comparing that on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Everyone so, was comparing it. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, so I'm guessing when, when Daniel Bryan comes back, he, is he going to have the AJ Styles type role when he had in TNA? You know, when he's, you know... I mean, supposedly having an affair with Dixie Carter, and in and, the and end, nothing really happened. So, this is what it looks like he could be going. I, I mean, it, it, it would be nice to see him at SummerSlam uh, confess and say he never did nothing, you know, or, or, or take over himself, you know? Well, I mean, because I don't, I don't see this people, uh, how many going people on. Really uh, when, uh, believe, like, how many people hold on really second. believe that? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was going to say, I don't, because um, cause I kind of see Stephanie still blabbing her mouth about this shit. Or whatever, and you know, you saw Bree's reaction to it. So I kind of see, um, uh, you know, Daniel somehow showing up or whatever. And because if Daniel comes back healthy, and this story, and this is a storyline, I would be fucking pissed, just like the rest of all Daniel Bryan fans or Brian or uh, or excuse me, Brian Brian Danielson fans. I w- I would not like yeah. it. So. You gotta get this shit and, over with ASAP. You know, a- AJ Styles. You know, you're talking about the Claire Lynch storyline. You know, ever since AJ Styles left TNA, he's talked about that storyline because people have asked him, and he says it was just, it was a terrible, terrible storyline. And you know, obviously, it didn't kill AJ's career. You know, TNA kind of did that on their own. But still, like this, just it just makes no sense. I I don't get it. You know, and how many people, you know, most wrestling fans know who Daniel Bryan is, and how many people really believe that this, you know, nice guy who's nobody you know, knows he's a former, it's, it's he's a former just, it's basically just Stephanie uh, getting back at her, which will happen uh, later on because I guess you know uh, Stephanie basically booked a match with uh, them because you know Brie came down to slap uh, the uh, chick Megan Miller, and uh, you know Stephanie was like, oh, and after every night. Uh, you can hear her saying yes, yes, you know, and then Brie attacked her or whatnot and booked the match. And later on in the show, uh, when uh, Brie came down, Brie asked her fucking gear was looking sweet, by the way. Um, and Stephanie hear her music basically, uh, it's basically payback on, you know, uh, the whole situation of Stephanie going to jail and now Brie going to jail. But this time, you know, with Brie going to jail, it's like, whatever, you know, who cares? I mean, when Stephanie went to jail, it, the crowd was definitely hyped, you know? Like, yeah. whatever. You know, I, I will say this. This whole Brie Bella, Stephanie storyline has actually been pretty interesting for the most part. I actually part. like it. I That's actually just like my, it. my, you know, two cents on it. I thought it's been pretty interesting. It's been, you know, you've had the moments where Steph got arrested. You I know, can agree. Uh, you know, Brie put the yes lock on Stephanie tonight. Almost. Um, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts, Oscar? <sighs> well, it's been really interesting. I just hope that I know r- rumors are not sometimes are not true, but this one thing I have a problem with it. If, if they're gonna go this way, I mean, well, I'm he- hearing or reading that Stephanie is gonna win Sunday. By the help of Nikki Bella, I don't want to see a Bella versus Bella feud down the road. <laughs> so I'm just hoping uh, those those rumors are false. I kind of wouldn't mind because then when Daniel Bryan comes back and if Cena's still champ, Steve Bryan could take that title. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm still calling right now. Daniel Bryan was where Rumble. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind a Bella know. versus Bella feud. It would be new, something new. It would be something, and, it's, and you know what, it's something interesting because it seems like for the past couple of years, if you're not involved with going for the Divas title, none of the other Divas have a storyline. So to kind of have a secondary uh, Divas storyline going on, 
It's pretty yeah, you cool. You don't have to worry and about the Bellas getting like title it. shots. It's but also, extra. I forgot to mention, um, Christopher Daniels tweeted out during Raw, <laughs> this is just why Christopher Daniels is just still one of the funniest guys in wrestling. He tweeted out that he had nothing to do with this, with this whole storyline. His hands are clean. Hilarious. You know, the thing is, at least you know that wrestlers, they fucking watch, you know, other products when they say that they don't, which is funny. But uh, moving on, um, Dolph Ziggler, he's Slayer. I'm not even just going to get into the match. I'm just going to let you know he's Slayer got the W because Miz, you know, basically distracted him. Another dist- another distraction W. He's Slayer's been on fire. Looks like he was getting a little small, little tiny little push there. You know, they're trying to show people, oh, look, uh, watch he's Slayer. He actually got a chance tonight, too. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hey, he- this is the new streak that's going on. This is the one you're talking about? The streak is over. Undertaker's streak is over. Now it's Heath Slater's streak. Fuck Heath Slater. I you know like what? Heath Slater. Fuck I you know like what? Heath Slater. Fuck you. Heath Slater man. is awesome. And if I you don't like Heath Slater, Slater, fuck you. I'm not going to sit over here and act like I don't like him because I actually liked him. Like, I actually wanted them to push him a long time ago um, before the whole 3MB shit. But we'll see what happens. We'll see how long it lasts because, you know, he does have a tag team partner, too, Titus O'Neil. They have a streak, too, as a tag team, by the way. Um, Play it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, we um, mentioned about Randy Orton versus Sheamus tonight. Uh, it was just like uh, – it, it was. I really wasn't into the match, but I'll tell you at the end, Randy Orton is probably one of the best WWE superstars that are – great at uh counters like he count like if you go back and find a youtube fucking video that shows his best counters he's got a lot remember the one he did on uh evan Bourne and the one he did on cm punk at wrestlemania he's done a lot yeah the one he did on yeah. christian <laughs> like or is good at delivering that rko out of nowhere and he did another one tonight yeah, that Chris, when I actually witnessed that live, I'm like, wow. <laughs> like of course you did. It was in L.A. I know, L.A., of course. Um, yeah, he does have crazy counters. I mean, wait till he goes to the Hall of Fame, and they're going to be bringing up those counters and how good he was, how how good that, you know, how good he was, how he came up with those counters. So he's probably the most um, – Probably the most wrestler I've ever seen that does a lot of counters more than anybody. You know, I I, I mean, DDP, I think DDP did some in WCWs like that, but but freaking Randy Orton executed executed like ten times better than what DDP would do. You know, and and it makes it more memorable than D, than DDP does. Don't like, forget Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's a beast on on the fucking counters too, bro. Yeah, There's yeah, not- guys too. But then it makes the submissions. I mean, I, I agree. It's a, it's a different thing. But Randy Orton makes it like memorable. Like who? You know, like ten years now, you're gonna remember the whole Evan Bourne thing. You're gonna remember that ten years from now. So everybody will. Not just only me and you. So I'm just saying, Man, you already makes it like you know, you know like, like, makes it more memorable. Well, yeah, I think yeah, people people nowadays, and I probably have done it too. People give Randy Orton uh, a tough time, say he's boring. I don't think it's his fault. Um, one thing Randy Orton does, and he did a great in this match, is just his uh, his facial expressions during the match. You know, he's he did like the whole Hogan ear thing at one point, and then you know after the RKO um, that he gave on Sheamus, he did the classic Orton pose. Um, Orton Orton can still Orton can still deliver when the time's right. And you know, I'm I'm actually looking forward to see what he can do with Roman Reigns one on one. We'll see what happens with that. Um, we might as well go ahead and mention the whole uh, ending uh, with the birthday situation. So it was Hulk Hogan's birthday or whatnot, and uh, today, happy birthday again, Hulk Hogan. Uh, so you have Mean Gene Oakland and Jimmy Hart in the ring. They introduce Hulk Hogan, and then Ric Flair's music hits. Mr. Wonderful uh, comes down. You have Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, Roddy Piper. Um, good moment. 
to see the NWO little small reunion. I didn't get to watch the rest of the birthday thing after Brock Lesnar came down. Brock did say he was coming back down and said it was his house. And um, it really looked like Brock was about to destroy everybody for a second. But, you know, which we didn't mention, John Cena's bum-ass fucking promo. Uh, Cena basically, you know, looking retarded as usual in his... Um, and his, you know, wristbands or whatnot, and his ugly new shirt, and I'm not even sitting in my scene. I'm just gonna pass this on. Go ahead, Oscar. Say something to it. Well, he did mention that supposedly, you know, he's gonna be a different John Cena you guys never seen before. This Sunday, so we'll see what happens. I don't know if he meant that. He did mention about like the whole freaking. You guys want me to change? You guys don't want me to stop wearing these shirts, these Kmart shoes, these brands. You know, I've been hearing that for years, so. You know, you know just like you said earlier, like, just like you said earlier, um, how you mentioned about um, how, how uh, you mentioned about the uh, whole situation about Paul Heyman's uh, promo. You know, he basically said the same thing what he said last week. Cena said the same thing before every pay per view. So, what can I say? No, oh, whatever. I I don't know what kind. Of, I don't know if this is gonna be. Uh, no disqualification match. It would have been nice. It, it maybe what got me more into it is this even no DQ match. If he doesn't go in there, like he's gonna go in there and beat the shit out of Lesnar. He doesn't need to do his pose. He does when he comes in the ring, runs to the ring. Hell no, he should go in there running, tries to beat the shit out of Brock Lesnar. And that's what I, I kind of want to see, but I don't know if that's that's the way they're gonna do it. But that's what I will do. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. It's, Basically, it's whatever, but then he has to play Can I'm sorry to cut you off. Anybody that thinks yeah. Rooster's going to win a fucking Royal Rumble needs to stop watching professional wrestling. Thank you. Who said that? Is that who I think it is that, that said that? Did Nick say that? Rooster's going to win the Rumble. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, he said Russo Swerve. Never mind. My bad. Oh, it's uh, still. I, I see that. Shout out to Nick, by the way. What's going on there, Nick? <laughs> so, anyways. Shout out, to, shout out to Michigan. Hope it doesn't get cold out there soon. But anyways. Um, yeah, just the same. You can say the same shit with Cena. But, oh, well. We'll see what happens Sunday. On a whole other note, let's just go down the, the whole SummerSlam um, card. We might as well do that because... Um, SummerSlam is actually this Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, at the beautiful uh, Staples Center, the the arena of champions of the 16-time champion Los Angeles Lakers, the two-time champion Los Angeles Kings, and the two-time champion Los Angeles Sparks. <laughs> I had to do and, it. Zero, and, and zero-time champion Los Angeles Clippers. I know Clipper fans <laughs> listening to this. Oh shit! Um, but um, I hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, our predictions. Are you ready, guys? Uh, bring it. Tom, you ready? Yeah. All right. So, SummerSlam. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with the. Uh, I'm just gonna say it probably won't be the first match, but uh, AJ versus. Page for the WWE Divas title. Hold on. Title's on the line, right? Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, I don't know what, but the Usos are doing an open challenge tomorrow. I don't know if that will link to a uh, SummerSlam match. Do you want to wait to do this on Wednesday instead? I just I just thought this in my head right now. We could just fucking add that in on on on, a, on fucking Wednesday if it happens. Let's just do these shits now. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, WWE Divas title match, Paige versus AJ. I'm taking fucking Paige. I'm sorry. I love you, AJ, but I'm taking Paige in this one. Her confidence is, like, up right now. Yeah, I went for Paige, too. Uh, this rivalry is going to continue on. I can't see it ending, so I'm going with Paige on this one. You know what? I'm going to go in a different direction, and I'm going to say AJ pulls off the victory here. 
Um, I think this is going to lead to one more final match on Night of Champions where Paige could be victorious. I think AJ, though, is going to get the victory here. All right. Okay. Black match. Rusev versus Jack Swagger. I am going with Rusev. I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks. I, I still represent the USA, though, but Rusev is the man. I'm going... Well, I'm going to witness the first loss of Rusev. I'm going Jack Swagger on this one. I'm going to go with Rusev. I think they're still just building him up. I think he's going to pick up the victory. All right. Next up, you got Chris Jericho versus Bray White. I think Bray White's going to win this one. Yeah, same here. I think Gray got this one, and uh, he'd probably be what two and zero at Staples Center. If he wins this one. I have a funny feeling that Chris Jericho's gonna win, though. But I'm going Bray Wyatt. I'm going Bray Wyatt. Okay. Bray um, House. We got Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon. I'm gonna go with Brie Bella. This is a tough one right here because I don't. It's the whole Nikki Bella thing is rumor shit and Stephanie, but I'm just hoping it's not true. I, I'm picking too many heels on this shit, so I'm picking three on this one. Yeah, I don't know. This one's tough. Um, I'm gonna go with three too. And that's all over the three, right? Just to see, you know, what happens. I don't know. Maybe they'll keep going with this feud. Who knows? Hey, Skits, you pick Bree, right? I sure do. All right, just making sure. All right. All right, and the next matchup, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. I'm going Seth Rollins on this one. I just... I just feel like he, he found, he'll find a way to win this match, and he's going to continue on. So, Seth Rollins. I'm going to go Dean Ambrose. All right. Dean Ambrose has been chasing a little too long. <laughs> he might chase him a little bit longer, but go ahead. Can't believe I actually went to um, Dean Ambrose. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Dean Ambrose. All right. I love Seth Rollins. I'm sorry, Seth. Uh, Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, I apologize, everybody, for saying this. With The Miz. <laughs> this is a tough one right here. Fuck. Um, they ain't tough. That's fucking easy as fuck. They're not going to reward Dolph Ziggler. Don't even give a shit about Dolph. Let's be 100. I guess me and fuck it. As much as I want Ziggler to win, I just think Miz is going to win somehow, some way. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. I'm going to go Roman Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Yep, I'm going Roman Reigns as well. And the main event, John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. I'm going to see a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So I'm going Brock Lesnar. As much as I hate to say it, but the champ is here. You're really going for Cena. I don't see Brock Lesnar winning. All right. I'm going Lesnar. I feel like this. Better like this. I feel like this is one of the toughest. This is one of the toughest cards to predict in a while, just because you don't know what's going to happen. Like anything could happen. Like my heart wants, you know, Brock to win, but my head says, my brain says that Cena's going to win because you know the WWE likes to fuck people over, so they're going to fuck up. That is just the biggest, you know. 
you know, as I, I, I say before, and I, I'll say it again, you know, WWE screws up a lot of things. A lot of things. They screw up pushes. They screw up, you know, feuds. But if Brock Lesnar does not win this match, then this was one of the most pointless feuds in WWE history. Hey, it's a lot of pointless feuds that we've seen. Completely and utterly pointless. What a Brock Lesnar needs to win this match. Cena needs to get the shit kicked out of him. I hope Cena gets the shit kicked out of him so hard that he's out for a couple months. You know, there is talks about Cena make, uh, going to make make a movie, but you never know. We, to be honest, we'll have to wait to see what happens. This is like, you you don't know who's going to win, because either one can win. You've heard so many rumors. Anything can happen. You know, John Cena, John Cena. So anything can happen with that. So well, let's I just can, look forward to say, Sunday and see what happens. I can tell you this, though. Lesnar is scheduled to continue on working and, until after Night of Champions. So who knows? He could have a one-month reign, so. We'll see. I don't know. That's all I have to say. And I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, real quick, before we go on commercial, I just want everybody to know we'll be taking calls in a minute. Seven six zero four five four eleven zero seven is the number, or you can tweet us at Wrestling Heads. That's on Twitter. So um, we'll be uh getting to that in a minute. So and. Actually, uh, we just had somebody tweet us, X Toast Face Killer. It says, no access, disappointed. You know, uh, if you're listening still, uh, I'm pretty sure me and Oscar are disappointed, but we're going to have our own access with no pay, if you know what I mean. Oscar knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just look forever. Just stay in the downtown area. It's hard to stay. If you want to look for WWE Superstars, you'll find them. Right, right across yeah. the street is a hotel. They'll probably be over there. Um, they Also, just let, let all the uh, fans know, since there's no access, uh, they are going to have uh, questions and answers at the Nokia um, Theater. Not theater, excuse me, Nokia Club, which is across the street from Staples Center. So you got Roman Reigns is going to be there. Uh, you got uh, Sting, Hogan, DX. Daniel Bryan, Rhea? Really? Is Daniel Bryan on it? I don't think so. I don't remember reading his name on that. I'm not sure. Cesaro's there, I think. Uh, and, and not only that, you know, uh, in the afternoon, they, on Saturday afternoon, they're going to reveal the roster for WWE 2K15. And uh, some names been re- revealed today, but they're going to reveal the full roster on Saturday. So, guess Speaking you want, you want of... to check it out. Speaking, if you're looking for signings, you can also always hit up the Wrestling Guy store, which where we will be on Saturday. You'll see yep. Drew McIntyre, or a.k.a. Drew Galloway, will be at the Wrestling Guy store. Um, he'll be signing during the uh, early in the day, in the morning. Uh, and then later on, WWE Hall of Famer Lita will come in. And WH Radio will have a special show on Saturday live at the store. So you guys want some signings and in in the California area, make sure you guys uh, hit up the Wrestling Guy store. That's on August 16th, 11 o'clock to 1 p.m., Drew McIntyre. So just letting you guys know, be on the lookout for it. All right, um, let's take a quick commercial and let's get back to some talk, some wrestling talk, and we'll take a car or, or like two. Be um, right back. What's up, everybody? This is the New Age Punisher Bebo, and you're listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Four Corners Radio is the home for the best professional wrestling and independent wrestling. Discussions and coverage. Billy, Ant, Martin, and Sam bring you three of the best podcasts every week. The Four Corners Raw Roundtable, the Indie Project, and the Saturday Freestyle. Along with the podcast, FourCornersWrestling.com is designed with all wrestling fans in mind. Future articles, videos, the weekly shows, and much more. Four Corners and Wrestling Heads are teaming up to bring you wrestling's next revolution. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready to rumble. Okay, hey, 
Hey, I gotta say something real fast. Um, this, uh, I feel bad for David, the, the owner, but uh, hope he hope he's listening to this. But uh, your boy Drew McIntyre botched your uh, store. He says it's in Huntington Beach, was in Huntington Park. So hopefully David's listening. He can like fix that for that. So um, yeah, just to let you know that <laughs> he did botch the tweet. <laughs> Before we move on, guys, um, completely unrelated to wrestling, just want to make a quick notion. Just want to say big condolences out to uh, family of Robin Williams. Of course, big news of the day is not raw. It's Robin Williams who passed away today at 63. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. One of the funniest guys that I can remember. Yeah. I remember coming up as a kid, you know, the movie Mr. Delphire, definitely one of my favorites. I used to watch that all the time. And, um, you know, he was part of the movie Aladdin, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, yeah for me, yeah, he, there was some kind of mo- couple of movies I remember him in, like, in, uh, like, for example, Jumanji. I used to have the video and the board game itself. And, uh, you know, when I was, like, little, I used to lo- love that movie a lot. So, um and also Hook, um, when he was playing Peter Pan, that was a uh, great film he did. So there was a couple of childhood. Um, there was a couple of um, classics that he's in. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, yeah, yeah. Had some prayers to his family, and uh, especially he died today. So. It's crazy. Uh, one more thing about uh, Robin. I was actually buying uh, a DVD on iTunes, and I noticed that uh, his Mr. Delphire movie's on sale, so... I think they're doing like a tribute type of thing for him on iTunes, so let's throw that out there. But uh, back to uh, some uh, wrestling talk here. Um, something that we didn't get to touch up on, Alberto Rio ADR. Damn. Uh, where do we start? Like, so this... There's been a lot of rumors out there, and you know, and that he basically got fired uh, for slapping a guy uh, that works for the social media uh, for saying a racist type of joke. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, my question about that, you know, do you think that the person who made the joke should have also got, you know, fired or released along with? Uh, Del Rio, or would you had got rid of Del Rio, or maybe give him a little suspension? Um, because I kind of think, you know, they kind of went hard on, uh, you know, Del Rio. You know, they didn't give him a chance. You know, it's like, oh, we don't really need you no more. So, like, that was their like easy way to get rid of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I could say, well, well, I'll tell you this though. Um, it just seems like well, today with the WWE, they're doing budget cuts. We all know that. And um, and what you said about with that uh, guy that made a racist joke, I mean, I, I didn't hear nothing about that at all. But all I know is Del Rio slapped someone in the face. And um, really, you can't do that. But I, I don't know if the, the racist joke thing was true or not. I mean, if it's true, he should get fired too. But um, like I said, it just seems like right now with all the budget cuts going, they're just looking for a reason to get rid of you. It's just like a normal job. When you hear your job, like when I used to work at BMW, I was hearing rumors that they're laying off people and they're trying to get let go of people and all this stuff. And, and then I, I heard someone getting fired and all that for a stupid reason. And it's like, okay, they're just trying to find someone to get rid of, like find a good way to get rid of people, you know. So that's – I mean – Basically, if you're working at WWE, it's like working a normal job. You you, you got to be careful what you're doing. So, I mean, it, it doesn't matter who you are, pretty much. If if you're freaking Jack Swagger going to get doing pot again, then you're not going to get fucking fired this time. You know, even though you're red hot right now. So, um, yeah. So, it, anybody's employed at WWE, better be careful right now. So, don't be doing something stupid. Um, but I can't really comment about the whole racist thing. Well, I'm gonna know right now. I don't know. Uh, Conan, um, which I want to get into in a bit. Conan had a conversation with a couple of, uh, he said some some uh, comments about it. And um, 
you know, I guess a fan asked him, how do you know? I guess he had the conversation with Del Rio, and uh, so Del Rio basically told Conan. And you know how Conan is on Twitter. We know he uh, he likes to talk a lot. So, But to let you guys know, on a good note, Del Rio is already booked. Um, he's um, going to be booked uh, with uh, for Triple A, Triple Mania, uh, their show, which is actually yeah. – that is that is actually um, Conan's uh, promotion. He's one of the. I, I, guys. I wouldn't say that's his promotion. That it's basically he's involved in, but I don't think he's that's his promotion. Um, I know they're they're gonna do tapings over here in Los Angeles. I'm trying to figure out where they're doing it, but my guess is is that because over here in LA we have a lot of TV studios. I just find out that they're gonna move in some station called El Rey Network. Um, so I'm guessing if there's an El Rey Network studio around here in LA and that means that's what ended the tapings and supposedly they're doing it this month so I might want to check that out <laughs> you know so I, I, I could dig some Lucha Libre I can understand the language and everything so yeah <laughs> if you want to go with so, skits you could go with those skits <laughs> so from from like what I'm saying is Del Rio's considering returning to to uh, AAA once his WWE contract is, um, he was talking about you know, going to AAA once his contract had expired. So, you know, basically, yeah. it's a win-win si- yeah. basically, it's kind of a win-win situation here for Del Rio. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, AAA is actually doing something big now, and the, I was hearing that they were trying to go after Rey Mysterio if, if he didn't resign. So he's still signed with the WWE, so you can't get Rey Mysterio. Um, it's, it's it's funny that you mention that because Conan also when he was ranting um, on the whole ADR situation, he also ran at how the WWE uh, has no respect for uh, Rey Mysterio. I I don't know about that. Like I kind of disagree with Conan right there. I mean, I I I think they 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 love Rey Mysterio. They respect him a lot. Like they keep offering new contracts, which I, to me I don't think he deserves, but he still do it. Um, I don't know why, because maybe he marks it with the children. You know, WWE really care about children a lot these days. And he's his stuff's probably still getting sold in merchandise. Probably action figures still getting sold a lot. His mass, but um, I don't think they disrespect them though. I mean, I mean, I don't know if he meant that they're trying to look for a new Rey Mysterio. That's why they got Kalisto. But I don't blame him because, you know, Ray's he's old. He's getting hurt a lot. I mean, he's barely on TV. When's the last time we've seen uh, Ray? And I'm already knowing that our boy Smart Talk is going to definitely go look that up for us. Shout out to him. He does a lot. Uh, he, he's always I'm pretty sure the last time we saw him was right after WrestleMania because I know he was in a WrestleMania match. So Real quick, right um, uh, Oscar, I know um, our boy Tom over there just sitting quiet. I know you have some thoughts on it, uh, the whole ADR situation. Yeah, well, you know, the whole report's coming out that, you know, the social media manager made a racist remark, you know, and, uh, you know, he said, you know, Alberto Del Rio should be cleaning off the plate instead of whoever it was. And then, you know, Del Rio hearing about it and confronting him. But the thing that bothered me the most is that the reports that came out that the guy who made the racist remarks, the social media manager, didn't apologize. He uh, reportedly just stood there and kind of smirked and laughed about it. And, you know, he got his shit slapped. And yet I don't blame Del Rio one bit whatsoever. And I think most fans are going to agree if this is if this is the story. You know, if somebody said something like that and then, you know, and I go to them to tell them to apologize and they're sitting there and smirking and laughing, I'd slap the shit out of them. Probably not even slap. I'd punch him right in the face, you know. What would you do, Oscar? You know, you, are, you, know, who, uh, you know, who knows if that social media manager never... Let me ask um, Oscar's even, question, because you know, you know, Oscar and the uh, Del Rio, remote, they're the same race. What would you have done in, in that situation? And you're a star. Um, okay, this is what I would have done. Um, to me, it, I don't know... What kind of person Del Rio feels about WWE does he really need to be there? If I was wanted to stay employed with the WWE, like I really want to be there still, I will say something to management about that. 
And then maybe one of these days I will catch him, the guy alone, nobody around, and not just beat his ass. That's probably what I would have done. I mean, that's what I would have done in the, in the real work world. Like if I hear somebody yeah. in, in my in my job saying, you know, fuck Mexican, fuck spec, and all this shit, you know, I mean, or Oscar, you, you tell him and his family to go back to just two hours down the street. I'm like, if I hear that, you know, I'm yeah. like. Oh shit! I wouldn't it's just find him at work. It's you know, ridiculous. I say something and, like after you know the whole the whole thing that Del Rio, you know, wasn't going to re-sign with WWE after his contract was up was probably a big influence in him doing this. Yeah. Um, but like you I were mean, saying earlier, when you asked the question, um, I believe the social media manager should be fired. Um, if not fired, then suspended without pay for an extended period of time for even instigating this because, you know, it's one thing to make a racist remark, but then, you know, when you're confronted about it and you don't even apologize or say, you know, it was a joke, I was being stupid, I'm an idiot, I'm sorry, he's standing there and he's smirking and instigating it even more and then gets his shit rock, um, you know, he should still just be disciplined. I don't care what position he has. Yeah, you know what? Another, another thing, and, you know, he just made a point. Like, okay, he was probably trying to leave anyway. So, um, if, if 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 I was him, if I was if I was leaving anyway, it's so like, all right, fuck it, let me just kick his ass. Like, I would have done the same thing if I was leaving my regular job. I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna leave anyway. So let me just kick his ass. Fuck it. <laughs> and, Speaking uh, of Joe, the um, there is also talk about you know TNA was interested in him. Um, yep. TNA reported it. It looks like hours after Del Rio got released, like hours, they were trying to find his phone number to get him because they wanted him in there and they wanted him to be champion. My question is, who the fuck want to go to TNA with the whole situation they're in right now? Why would he want to go to TNA? I don't think Del Rio is that stupid. (laughs) You will. No, I don't think so either. But I'm just saying, who anybody? Why would you want to go to TNA with the current situation is? You know, I, probably that's why Red Dragon resigned. They probably don't want. They don't want to go with TNA. Yeah, um, I'm over here actually replying to a road dog, Jesse James. He actually just tweeted any uh, good independent wrestling shows around LA this weekend. I'm telling him to wait for August 30th, uh, 29th, 31st for PWG. Both. Um. I know we're, I know an independent show going on Saturday uh, during the same time know. where uh, okay I'll I tweet them right now then uh, I'll actually tweet them right now I, yeah, I but you know this whole Del Rio getting released thing you know is big news it was everywhere people were talking about it you know it's a shame that it happened and it's a shame you know what WWE has been doing to Del Rio because you know the guy has a ton of talent in the ring. You know, he's a ring general. You know, he can go in there with anybody and get Dude, a good dude. match out of them. I used to hate when and, people used to, like, dog him. Like, I'm like, are y'all crazy? Like, dude can go. Like, dude's a fucking hell yeah. of a wrestler. One of I, the best in-ring wrestlers in the WWE. Yeah. And, I'm like, you know, once hey. once they took away uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, you know, that whole feud with Rob Van Dam, where Ricardo sided with RVD, and then they started to take away his cars, which made his character. You know, once they took that away, it kind of just, like, the, uh, the ship was sinking for him, you know? Yeah. Was, well, it, it, there's talk about... Um, it, it is amazing heard, you can do uh, anything with the guy. I also heard today that uh, there, there's uh, talks about re, re, uh, Knight and uh, Del Rio and, um, and uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, so... Yeah, yeah. Be, be, be. No, go, go ahead, Tom. It's, oh, uh, I was going to say... All, these, all well, these releases in WWE, you know, we had the budget cuts a couple months ago, you know, Evan Bourne, uh, Drew Galloway got released, you know, Yoshitatsu, Ginger Mahal, etc. And now we have Del Rio and uh, Mark Yeaton, the timekeeper, who's been with the WWE for so many years. You know, nobody. I didn't know about that one. Yeah, last week, last week, uh, Mark Eaton, he's the timekeeper. 
and um, he got released, and he's been with the company apparently since the first WrestleMania. He's been with the company for a long time. A lot of people know him for throwing uh, Steve Austin his beers. Guy's got an arm on him. Apparently, he uh. was, uh, you know, he was very, he was very tight with a lot of the higher ups in the company. But I don't know. He just got released. Well, we'll see what yeah. happens. Next. I don't. I'm. I'm hoping nobody else gets, uh, you know, released anytime soon. But we'll see. Um. Real quickly, though, guys, let's take one more break. Let's take another break, and we'll take a phone call. So, right back. This is Nick. And this is Matt. The Young Buck super kicking you all the time. This is Wrestling Heads Podcast. Check it out. Yo, welcome to WH Radio. Today's show is brought to you by the good people down at WrestlingRambles.com. For the latest in wrestling news, in-depth blog, and hot-topic discussions, Hit up WrestlingRambles.com. Remember, it's not just any ramble, but a Wrestling Rambles. WrestlingRambles.com. And also special thanks to Ring Rust Radio and FLTDWrestling.com. Thank you for listening. Welcome back to Radio. And I think our first call is actually a regular uh, he he has the area code of eight six five. I think this is him. Eight six five. You're on WH Radio. Yo, Smartcast. What's going on, Smartcast? Giving you the information. Got you the uh, Rey Mysterio stuff. <laughs> What's going on, man? Rey Mysterio? Oh, nothing. Uh, I did want to say uh, El Rey. He said that the AAA is going to be on El Rey. El Rey is an English speaking Spanish channel owned by Robert Rodriguez, who directed Machete. And yeah. from Dustin yeah. on. So getting on that channel is a huge deal because that's actually a huge network now. Um, yeah, and I also the, heard... It's with, it's yeah, with a Latin I, community that speaks English. Yeah, and I also that's heard really that cool. uh, when that Triple Eight show is going to come on, they're going to do it in English. Yes, they are. I'm here. It's because that's oh, an English-speaking yeah, that's channel. That's crazy. Yeah, it's an English-speaking you know, channel. I mean, um, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny you mentioned that because people are saying New Japan should do something like this. New Japan is going to do this. I don't I'll know if they'll yeah. do it. And no, you know, really need to want to see this happen. There's this guy out there right now, Oscar. Uh, he has his own channel. It's like the yeah. New Japan English commentary. I can't English deal commentary. with it. I couldn't deal yeah. with it. I'm worried. I, I got to hear my, you know, guys from Japan, you know, do the commentary. I got to hear them. You know? yeah. I, also, ah. I think it's easier for um, AAA to do an English-speaking thing as opposed to New Japan because, number one, the time difference is. You know, Mexico is, you know, right next to the United States, so the time differences aren't that big. With Japan, you know, you have to wake up at 3, you know, 3 in the morning just to catch one of their shows. You know, how many people are going to do that? Not many people. Well, the languages are close, too. Uh, Spanish is a lot closer to English than Japanese is. So it's just there's a whole different spectrum. (laughs) I think, yeah. but I still think it would work if they got the right commentators. Like Jim Ross has been saying, he's been down to commentate a New Japan thing. He's been saying that for twenty years. So <laughs> if they got the right commentators, I think it would work. But I don't know if they got some Joe Schmo off, off the side of the road. Do you, no. Do you think Jr. Hmm? still has it? I mean, you, you know well, what? I don't know. Look, look. I listen to his podcast. He complains about how Ring of Honor needs to slow down because. If he was commentating Ring of Honor, it would be it would be very difficult. I mean, New Japan's the same thing. I, they don't slow down either. So how can he work doing a New yeah. Japan show? You know what I'm saying? He, he's he's awesome. complaining about Ring of Honor. Guys are going too fast, and they need to slow down for someone like him to get commentate. He he even yeah. says that well, he, he said not to disrespect Steve Carino and um, and Kevin Kelly. He just said that he seems like they are lost because. The, Guys are just going too fast. That's what he said, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like Jim Ross. He's one of my favorite commentators ever. But Jim Ross nowadays will complain about anything. He will go yeah. on this podcast and complain about any little minuscule thing. And I'm sorry. He won't shut up either. But sometimes, sometimes he just sounds so bitter and a little bit out of touch. Even it's you know I'm glad he's you know following Ring of Honor, but. Okay, yeah, I, you know, think I personally love, I think love Ring of Honor's color commentary team. 
I love they having Kevin, well Kevin Kelly in there. I think Kevin Kelly is a solid commentator. And then you have the humor, heel, Steve Carino, and then Nigel McGinnis <laughs> adds a lot of, you know, psychology and what the guys are doing in the matches. And he has, it, I think and he has the accent. Team. Well, I, I can tell you this, though. I bet you if he was his age, like he was in WCW doing the commentary and he was doing Ring of Honor, I think he'll do okay. I, no lie. I think he'll be all right. I, I don't see why he has to mention, oh, they need to slow down. I mean, a, a younger okay. JR could handle that kind of thing. I mean, the JR you know today, I don't think you commentate an ACH versus Jay Lethal match. He, I don't think he could do that. To be honest with but you, a younger JR but, can. I love JR, too. Y'all, we all love JR. What JR needs to do is just kick back and, you know, maybe call some boxing matches, what he's doing right now, or, you know, do something that, that's slow for him, you know, because he is kind of older. Or or he's such a Boomer Sooner fan. Why not he go to the fucking football games and he could come to the football game? I mean, I know he did an XFL, but, hey, football is slower. <laughs> I would be surprised at the, at, at the Oklahoma Thunder. Uh, hey, hey, hold on. I think I, think I heard Tom laughing. Go LA Extreme, baby. <laughs> XFL was one of the biggest jokes ever. Hey, I was glad the LA team won the damn championship. <laughs> I still got my LA Extreme hat. <laughs> oh wow, you actually have a hat. Yeah, yeah. Have a smart yeah. hat. Put, yeah, yeah, put Jay in there to call her. Put Jay in there to call her. Bad luck fail match. You can do that. Hey, oh, uh, yeah. by the way, just want to let you know, Oscar. Uh, Road Dog just tweeted you back. Okay, I'll check him out right now. Now, Smartcast, since we got you on and we were just talking about it, what is your whole take on Alberto Del Rio getting released and what you've heard um, probably from all the sites? Personally, I don't think what the dude said was racist. I don't think it had anything to do with race. I think they're just doing the thing where it's like, oh, it must have been racist because Alberto Del Rio is Mexican. But, no, I don't think what he said was racist at all. I think what he said was – because what the rumor is what he said was uh, he t- he was eating at the cafeteria, and the guy told him to clean his plate, and the guy said, no, that's Del Rio's job. I don't yep. think that that was racist. I think that what that was was Del Rio is low on the totem pole right now. He doesn't have a job. He goes up there and jobs to people, so he cleans plates. I don't think it had anything to do with race. However, the whole smirking thing, he could have at least said, hey, man, it was a joke. It had nothing to do with you being Mexican at all. He could have said that. So he did deserve the slap for that, though. But uh, Del Rio has to watch himself, and I'm actually happy he left because he wasn't being used right in WWE, and he'll be used right anywhere else. So I'm okay with him not leaving. I'm going to low-key yeah. miss ADR, you know. Now, it, it's kind of good and it's kind of bad that he left, you know, because, you know, now that he left, he can go somewhere else and shine, and then you have other guys that can, you know, probably get caught up soon, and they can get their shine on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there'll be there'll be times when he'll do something, and WWE will be like, "Shit," because you got to think about right now. What if someone up there in the WWE brass just watched Ricochet versus Matt Seidel? You know, they're like, "Oh my God, why the hell did we release that guy?" You know, they're thinking that. And then that's the same thing's going to happen to Alberto Del Rio. Yeah, it's. I think it's the same thing. The perfect example nowadays is uh, is EC3. That is oh. that has to be one of the biggest mistakes WWE has done. The guy has so much talent in the ring. His charisma is just off the charts, and I don't understand for what reason he got released. No idea. I don't know. Maybe they thought he was boring. But that does remind me of you said you didn't know what Cena looked like tonight. He looked like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. The huge wow. red. <laughs> Shirt with the yellow on it. He looked like wow. Alvin from know, Alvin and the know Chipmunks. What? Now it's because that was me tweeting about his gear earlier. I did not realize yeah. that. I was trying to look. I'm like, that does look familiar. Now that you mention it, yeah. Alvin and the Chipmunk. He is now yeah. Cena Chipmunk. That's not what I'm going to call him. Cena Chipmunk yeah. until he well, starts work at garbage. You should hashtag that. Huh? But well, that's, that's really, it was also the worst go home raw in recent history. I'm I'm sorry, I'm with skits on this, dude. That was the worst raw I've seen in a really long time. I hated I, that. I wasn't feeling raw whatsoever. This is like I only felt one match tonight, like just like I mentioned earlier. Like I can't sit up here and say I was enjoying Seamus and and you know, word in which we've son, seen how how many times? I've seen this plenty yeah. of times. Love like, the ending. It's love like oh, the ending. I'm like, well, oh I could say Oh yeah, I, I could you say gotta love the ending. You got you got, got you got to love the ending, but you know, 
No. You're like, was, none of that. It, well, none of it made me wanted to buy the network. None of it made me want to watch SummerSlam. Not a and single bit like, you know, of that made me want to watch SummerSlam. Another thing, I am sick no. and tired of the WWE, you know, promoting their shit like crazy. Like, the 999 shit is old already. Like, fuck. Like, stop it, please. I don't, don't know about please. old, but it, it not being the crowd is even going with it. 999. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Stop it. Like, why? Like, what are you guys doing? No. Please stop it. Don't I mean, make this happen. I, I'm, not, I'm not coming out and saying 999, but the crowd's do, going for it. They're doing it, oh. too. And you know what's funny? I know it's funny, like, I, once again, the internet report this again. I, I, like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but I'm hearing that Triple H is actually pissed off at the fans because, you know, they're saying they're trying to be cheap. Like, for example, there's probably people asking for their passwords. Hey, what's, the pa- what's your password? What's your password? They don't have to want to freaking buy the oh, network. Trust so, me, not the of course. Course. I mean, I mean the what, one thing I say... What, besides the pay-per-views, what content is on the WWE Network worth checking out? Maybe NXT, you know, with, with, what NXT, kind of cool. with what NXT is doing, I would buy the network for NXT, especially with all the recent signings they have. And once those guys get on NXT, I'm going to be watching NXT every moment. But besides that, there's just not a lot of content on there worth honestly getting. I, I mean, mean I, 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 you, know, hey. you know what? what Maybe some people are actually pissed off because they thought that they're going to have all the Raws, all the Nitros already when the network signed up, but it. I did. Thunder, man. Thunder, I'm still, what I I'm, on, Thunder. Uh, I'm still actually <laughs> waiting on the uh, Monday Night Wars. That's what I've been waiting on. That's like As soon as I saw Monday Night Wars, I'm like, instant, bye, you know? Yeah. That was my thing. That was eight months ago. But, no, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean... It's like you get you get on Raw and you see this nine ninety nine crap and you get bored of it. But like to, to put it in perspective on how bad Raw was, I've watched Raw since the very first Raw. I swear to you, I swear to the heavens, I've seen every single Raw on Monday, every one, and I actually changed the channel this time because I Daniel Bryan affair thing. It happened. I changed the channel and I didn't turn it back until I saw until I turned it back like a few minutes later and saw Cesaro tapping out, and I was like, I hate WWE right now. And then I watched the match, and it was really good. But still, I, I actually changed the channel. They made me change the channel because they went, they went TNA. They went I'll tell TNA you one thing this. I'll tell you this real quick. Like I'm a, I'm not going to say that uh, I turned the fucking channel, but I'm definitely disappointed in what I'm seeing with the, with the WWE right now. And they do some changes they saw because uh, I feel where certain uh, wrestling fans are coming from. Same old shit. Well, well, I'm t- I'll tell you the bold statement that I made on SmartCast a few weeks ago. I'm going to make it here right now. I'm giving it until after Survivor Series. If WWE does not give me one thing to actually care about, I'm not watching it anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm going Ring of Honor and NJPW. I'm never watching WWE ever again because You're they pissed me off that much. I will, that I will not, I will not watch I'm it. sorry. So many people say that. So many people say they're going to stop watching. I'm sorry. Yeah. They tell me you're, you're going to stop I watching. Will. And then, the next, you know, you're going to hear, you know, Prince David is on the main roster and he's cleaning you'll house see. and you'll turn on Raw. Mark, you'll you'll see. See. <laughs> you're a boss. I don't lie, boss. man. As soon as lie. Prince David, Prince David, Kenta, and all these guys come up and WWE takes off like crazy, you're going to be like, oh, i got to go back and watch. Trust me. You're That'll be years guy. down the line. Well, That'll be the, years. The thing is, honestly, in the whole scheme of things, Vince McMahon needs to step the hell down. Vince McMahon still exactly. has this backwards idea of what storylines to do, who to push, you know, what time, you know, they should be filling out, what they should be doing. And, you know, there's been reports, you know, for months, you know, it actually was a couple months ago when the main thing was coming out. That Triple H and him and Vince have been butting heads. And, you know, Triple H wants a more serious product. He wants to focus on the tag teams and more on the divas, and he wants to get things going, and he wants to bring, you know, these people from NXT that is it's his baby. NXT is Triple H's child, and he looks over that thing more than anybody else, and he wants those people to succeed on the main roster more than anybody. And then you have guys like Vince, and, you know, reportedly Kevin Dunn, you know, not high on Bo Dallas and Adam Rose and Cage and shitting on their ideas. And it's just you know what, ridiculous. 
it's funny that you mention that because if you go and watch the Paul Heyman DVD, Paul Heyman even mentions that, you know, uh, Vince McMahon, they're back, like, they're doing shit that, you know, was done a while back, you know, you got to move on uh, to what's, what the fans want now, you know what I mean? Uh, That's why. One thing, I don't like Vince Russo, um, not not really one bit, but the one thing that he always did right when he was a writer with WWE is he always included everybody in, in the storyline, and, you know, people have said on shoot interviews and stuff that Vince Russo was the only person that would go up to Vince McMahon and say, you know what, you're wrong. You're not in touch with reality. This is what we have to do. So that is really the only positives about Vince Russo. And it's like we need somebody in that sort of sense to tell Vince, you're wrong. You need to retire. You have millions and millions of dollars. You can do whatever you want. Don't worry about the WWE. It's not going to go into bankruptcy. Just go and retire, please. And then we can get rid of Kevin Dunn. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's another thing. Vince McMahon doesn't want to do it. He just like the 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 late owner of the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis. He didn't want to give it up, and then he then he had to give it up only till he till he dies. You know, so you might see the same thing. We probably see Vince McMahon all beat up in the wheelchair, still saying, "I want this and that." It's going to be freaking hard. It's going to be really hard. Hogan versus Hogan versus Undertaker at WrestleMania 43. That's what we need. That's what we're going to get if he keeps running it up. That's what's going to happen if he keeps running it. That's what we're getting. We're just getting old guys. We need the new guys to come in, start focusing on new talent, start focusing on Cody Rhodes, man. Start giving him a push. Start really putting him in there. You know what? I'm I'm confident. Don't worry. I'm confident guys like NXT guys will come up and succeed. I'm confident guys like Sami Zayn will do something. I'm I'm confident guys like Kento will do something. I was just going to mention Sami Zayn. The only reason I think he is still down in NXT is because Triple H doesn't want him on the main roster, and he doesn't want him to get misused. Yeah. He doesn't want I don't to turn blame him. Zayn into like a comedy character or something. Exactly. He wants to keep Sami Zayn down in NXT because he's a big star down there. You know, he uh, you know he attracts a lot of fans. He's probably the most popular guy on that roster. And Triple H yeah, is probably like, but I want you to stay down in NXT because, you know, you're the best guy down there, and I don't want you on the main roster jobbing to, you know, everybody. You know, what, then, Tom, you know what, Tom? You just remind me of something about uh, when, when Samoa Joe was having that huge ass streak in TNA, you know, and, and it was funny that somebody was telling me, you know what, he should never go to WWE, and I'll tell you why. He, they're going to give him a stupid gimmick. And all this shit will be for nothing, seriously. And I, I, I would have, I would have with the guy if he went to WWE like around 2006, 2007. He probably would have gave Samoa Joe to the gimmick, you know. And not no mention of what he was having. He had a huge ass streak in TNA, and he was the damn champion there, you know. All that shit was no, just ready to turn toilet. I think they would do the same thing to Austin Aries. I don't think Austin Aries would be used right at all because he's on the smaller side. And most of the time, smaller guys, not including Daniel Bryan, most of the time, and Sam Punk, most of the time, smaller guys don't get used right in WWE. Hey, but if you Triple should, H ran you, it, though, you never know. Yeah, yeah, and you should know, you should be happy that he didn't hire Ricochet, because they didn't want a Ricochet. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's best he stays in the Indies. Or exactly. in Japan. That's why. Or, that's why. Whenever Evan Bourne got released, I did not cry a tear. I, he's one of my favorite dudes, but I'm like, he's gonna go and he's gonna do something amazing in the independence, and that's where he needs to be because he ain't gonna be used right in WWE ever. So let him go and do his thing, and then what's his first, the first real match he has with Ricochet, and he tears the house down. So that's perfect. Perfect where he needs to be. Yeah, yeah. you know what? You probably have to. Uh, you know, get to this until whenever Vince McMahon goes away. I'm seriously, you know, I, I'm not trying to be harsh here, but you know, until the time Vince McMahon leaves this earth, you will probably see more young, you can see more little guys getting hired, and and Triple H will freaking maybe, 
to fix this thing around. If, if Triple H is the guy to really fix the thing, but who knows if Triple H could fix it? Because you said he he wants to make it a serious product. Does Triple H know how to make the, the WWE a better, you know, product? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, he does. I, I he runs NXT. That. He runs NXT, and NXT way better than Raw right now. Like leaps and bounds better than Raw. And that's because yeah. Triple H knows what he's doing. He knows who to push. He knows who will get over with the crowd. He doesn't just, I mean, if Triple H would have been running the show, we wouldn't have had Reigns pushed over Rollins and Ambrose. We would have had yeah. Rollins and Ambrose over over Reigns. Because Reigns is a little so green. Reigns still been pushed. Oh, yeah, they're still getting pushed. I'm just, ta- I'm just saying Reigns is being pushed to the moon right now, and Rollins and Reigns are still kind of below him. Kind of. It's just that tri- Triple H is more in touch in with what the fans want. You know, if a guy gets a good reaction, Triple H doesn't look at it like, well, that guy is small. I'm not going to push him. He sees, like, holy shit, they're cheering the hell out of Sam Zayn. I'm going to make him the top guy. See, I, I, this is what I would have done if I was, like, running a company, if I had all these stars. It doesn't matter if I'm an indie promoter or top guy or top company like WWE. I, I would want to be around with the fans, right? You know what, fuck it. I would just sit down in a chair, just watch the damn show and, and with the crowd. Fuck it. I would have done the same thing. I want to feel what the fans feel about this character, that character. This, they, they think he sucks. Or this. I would have done that like every week. You know, I, I got to be right there. You know, it's like football. There's some offensive coordinators wants to be in, in that little booth up on, uh, on top of the damn stadium and some wants to be in the field, you know. So I would be around with the fans and see what they think and, 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 and feel like, okay, you know what, the crowd likes this guy. They like her. You know, maybe we should not have a Divas division. Maybe we should bring back Harper. I probably would have come up with some ideas crazy, you know. I just... And, and tell people on the creative team you should do this and that. You know, that's what I would have done. Make it less predict, make it less predictable is what I would do. Just, I mean, who, I mean, anyone who's been watching wrestling for the past five years knew that Brock Lesnar was going to come down there and Cena was going to save the day on that last segment. That everyone knew it was going to happen. And then the NWO whole reunion thing was so flat only because they waited to the last minute to do it, and they had to rush through everything. We could have got a good solid five, ten-minute just NWO reunion, but we didn't. We got two minutes, and Paul Orndorff taking 27 minutes to walk to the ring. So we could have got something. They shouldn't have saved that for last. That should have been done in the middle somewhere and then have a Brock Lesnar-Cena showdown later. Have that be last, but don't put put Hogan on last, man. You know what? I think what I predict, what, what I said last week, how they guard it up would have been way better having an end of your reunion than bring Damian Sandell just like Scott Steiner or, yeah. or an ex NWO uh, we're member. We're staying. We're staying. What? Just, look, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and the NWO just kick his ass, spray paint him. Who would want to see that? People spray paint the NWO been... on Damian Sandell. You know, well, nostalgia, that? that's nostalgia. That is nostalgia. That's what people want to see. People don't want to see Hogan rip his shirt off and reveal the black and white and then them do the too sweet <laughs> thing. They want to see action. They want to see someone get knocked out. Maybe Hogan drops a leg drop for the first time in 20 that's years. What I said. That's what I said. Boom. Damien said that would have been the perfect person. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That would have been much better than what we got. But I'll, I'll say this, though. When Lesnar got in that ring and got face-to-face with all those legends, I thought every single one of those legends were going to die. Like, it was like, dude, they're going to die. Every, they're going to be some broken hits going on here, dude, because he's going to destroy every single one of these guys. And then Cena came out, and I'm like, oh, come on, Cena. I wanted him to beat him up. I was like, this is I feel horrible, but I want him to end to me, up out of right all now. Them, <laughs> to me, out of all of them, I could, I could see him go, go against Les. It would have been Kevin Nash. Seriously, he looked like him better oh, yeah. than all those guys. <laughs> Kevin Nash would have been like, fuck you. Okay. Kevin Nash is like, fuck you, I can whip your ass. I don't know about Scott Hall. It's, it's like 1F5, he'll be dead. But. <laughs> <laughs> Flair stood up to him. Flair, like, stared him right in the eyes, and he said something. Flair was just like, all right, big boy. That's all. He didn't even move. I was like, damn, Flair's a G. <laughs> Holy crap. You know, was a, I mean, that yeah. was a great moment, but we could have gotten something so much better if they would have put that in the middle of the show, top of the second hour, top of the third hour, something like that. And gotten the Damien Sandow thing. I would have preferred that over over 
Kevin Nash singing Happy Birthday. That, that wasn't, that didn't w- do it for me. Somebody in WWE should have listened to the, the wrestling head radio last week. He probably would have used that exactly. idea better off. Yep. It would have been much better. I mean, it's just, it's just, I don't know, man. I wasn't, uh, all honesty, I wasn't excited about the NWO reunion anyway because I'm a big focus on the future, forget the past kind of guy. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie when Hogan said, let me tell you something, Mean Gene, I got goosebumps. I did because, I mean, that's classic. You haven't heard that in years. And I'm like, okay, that was kind of cool. So, I mean, it, as the thing went on, I got excited, and then the NWO came out, and it was flat. And I was like, ah, crap. But, you know, I think that's bad booking. Bad booking 101. Put it in the middle of the show. I don't know. WWE, you just got to yeah. gotta see what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll figure something out. I mean, and uh, all the, um, one thing I'm really getting tired of, even more than CM Punk chants, what is every single time Raw comes on, are we going to see Sting tonight? Are we going to see Sting tonight? No, he's not signed. You're not seeing Sting. It's not going huh. to happen. Sting is not going to huh. wrestle The Undertaker. Huh. Uh, he, he, I didn't even hear no CM Punk chant. Did you hear some CM Punk chant? I didn't hear not, not even not one. Tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. Huh. Not one. It was beautiful. I loved it. I loved the yeah. silence. You know, it's funny, uh, we didn't even mention this, but uh, CM Punk, well, they just announced that CM Punk will be in the WWE 2K15, so he's basically <laughs> confirmed there. No, but, I mean, yeah. Why not? Fuck it, why not? Have yeah. CM Punk in there. And um, also, Kevin Nash also, I think he tweeted it earlier that he mentioned that, that Diesel, his Diesel character will be in the game as well. I don't know about as Kevin Nash, but Diesel is, and um, yeah. that's it so far. So, but but oh, this Saturday, this Saturday over here in Los Angeles, California, um, they're gonna be there's gonna be a panel, so the, every name is gonna be confirmed. So who knows? I mean, there's a couple of guys I wanna. Hopefully they, they bring in like they never brought in in video games like Sid. I like to see Sid in the video game. You know, who, 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 with Sid, Psycho Sid, or just Sid? Oh, of course, Psycho Sid. I don't want to see no fucking Sid judges. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, what I want out of the game. Sid. Two things, man. Two things out of the game. Number one, you know, they always have the storyline mode where it's Attitude Era or Road to WrestleMania or something. I want a Monday Night Wars thing. Have a Monday Night Wars thing where you can play both WCW and WWE side. Do something like that. Or... The main thing I want is just a straight-up storyline mode where it's like you start in NXT and you work your way up. And like I think that's what they're going to do. Well, yeah, yeah, they do that. And where your choices actually make a difference, you know, like, oh, I don't want to save this person, so later it's going to make a huge difference. I want that. I want to like, I want to immerse myself in a storyline, not something yeah, that's already I, happened. If I'm not mistaken, I think that story mode – uh, thing is going to be only for Xbox One and PS4, not for the Sweet. 360 and in a PS3 version. So well, that works for yeah. me. I got a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweet. I mean, I don't got none of them yet. I'm saving money for Mania, so. Screw so you, man, I wouldn't play for right now. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry, but dude, I'll tell you this, man. I've had a PlayStation 4 since about two weeks after it came out. I played it three times. I don't, there's nothing out for it. There's, it's like there's garbage out for the, the system. And I'm like, dude, until they come out with something exclusive that's cool, fuck it. Dude, I don't even play it. I use it as a Blu-ray player. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, so save yeah. your money. Wait till it drops a little bit and something good comes out. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till after WrestleMania season and I'm probably get something, you know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. 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 Uh, Man, anyways, you know who's gonna buy two K fifteen motherfucking skits, well. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably buy it later. I probably won't get it right off. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it though. The only reason why I'm not like into it is because I don't know what the story mode is. Um, until I find out if it's gonna be another one of those attitude era things, I'm probably not gonna get it because I hated those where it's all predetermined and you do things that's already happened. I, I don't want to relive the Attitude Era or the road to WrestleMania or nothing. I don't want to relive that. I want to do something new. So if if nothing if there's nothing new in it, I probably won't buy it. So. Okay. Um, hold on a second. Skits, are you there? 
Okay, I think uh, Skit's um, lost Skit. Hold on, Tom, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I guess he lost Skit's for right now. Um, mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, but anyways, um, yeah, there was uh, there's something we got to talk about, one thing. Um, I know Skit's want to talk about this, but uh, TNA, today they announced they, they canceled some September shows. Like, what's going on here? I mean... What's going on here? Are they trying to save some money? Hopefully they can stay alive? Or are you calling it quits? You know, what's going on here? <laughs> mm, I, I don't know, man. I ain't really worried about it. I mean, is, 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 are, were they television typing? Yeah, I mean, no. I thought they are going to do some more tapings in September, and that was going to be the probably the final tapings for... Impact Wrestling, if I'm not mistaken, on Spike. I thought that would be the the final ta- um, episodes there. Yeah. But to me, where it looks like it's going, Down Cold to Glory is probably the last TNA show in the company's history, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or, they, or are they able to do, like, international shows? Because I think they still have deals with the international. Um, I think they're um, going to Japan, aren't they? Bound for Glory, but I'm saying oh, okay. they just do, do shows for the international deals. I think they still have international deals for like for another year or so. But if you don't have a deal for North America, you could be screwed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You don't have a TV deal, when, and you're a company that had a major TV deal. You're kind of screwed. Like I mean, like Ring of Honor doesn't have a major TV deal. They're fine. Uh, PWG's never had a P, had a TV deal, TV deal. So they'll they're never get one. They'll never get one. <laughs> Well, they I mean, I'm just saying, like, I don't yeah, well, if they don't, that's fine. They're going to live forever that way. But if you yeah. are a company that's had a TV deal and then suddenly you're shot down to independent, then you're so used to having all that TV money and you're not going to have that anymore. And that's going to kill you. Yeah. yeah. So the whole TNA thing, I'm reading more upon it. Um, this is from Mike Johnson on PWI Insider. Uh, he said the scheduled TNA live events that were canceled for late September were uh, were pulled as the company may may end up taping television in New York City at the Manhattan Center the same week, PWIinsider.com has learned. As previously noted here on the site, the company has a hold on several dates at the NYC venue and we're finalizing plans as to how many days they would tape. Since TNA is taped through September 25th already, if they tape a large number of episodes, they run the risk of taping in advance of Bound for Glory, which locked them into being unable to change finishes on the pay-per-view, as well as potentially spoiling the outcome of the pay-per-view's top matches. They need, what they need to do... No, they can't go live. I mean, I don't know what to say. I, really don't, I don't know what to say in the whole TNA situation. I just know the... From what I heard is that the uh, Manhattan Center, uh, they basically is closing down. So, from what I heard from Chris, so closing down. Then he said, like, uh, you know? if, if it's not the Manhattan Center, he said, uh, which one was? He said, uh, the. Uh, I'm thinking about a whole different arena. Never mind. No. <laughs> I don't know you Kevin, but I thought the uh, It is in New York though. Uh, I'm talking about the Hammer. Oh, no, uh, well Hammerside is it the Hammerside Barroom in the uh, Man Center is like the same thing pretty much? Like they're in the same building? I think Tom knows more. <laughs> I have no idea, man. I don't think so well, though, because I think the Hammerstein Ballroom is like almost like an opera house, like close to an opera house. Well, Tom lives in New York. He knows, like, the difference. I mean, you, I think yeah. he said at one point in the show that he said that the, so you walk in that building, that's the, that's the Hammerstein Ballroom. You have to go uh, up yeah. there and stand, like, right? The main difference is when the Hammerstein Ballroom is on the main floor when you first walk in ah. to that building. The Manhattan Center is up on is the seventh floor, I believe, and it's a much smaller venue. Holds That's less wrong, people, less less expensive. The Hammerstein is much more expensive than the Manhattan Center because it holds more and it's more <laughs> well equipped. So that tells, that tells you that Ring of Honor may have more money than TNA. 
<laughs> the yeah. Ring of Honor is not there every week. They're fucking owned by a to be there every week. Mm-hmm. All right, Peter, so I have a question for you guys. Do you guys think that TNA is going to use uh, New York City as uh, a piggyback thing, you know, to ride, ride on uh, New York to do a lot of shows in New York now? Now, you know, that they had the turnout that they just did uh, with their past shows. You think they're going to start doing a lot of shows in New York? Probably. I could see them starting to piggybacking on New York City. You know, they're getting good reactions um, from the crowd. Um, you know, the New York show so far has been all pretty good. Um, you know, the way it's coming off on television, you know, the arena looks, the well, Manhattan Center, not the arena. The Manhattan Center looks presentable. It looks like a place, you know, where you would want to go, even though it's a small building, but you're like, man, I wish I could be there. And it's a much more different feel than the impact zone, which was like not a lot of fans cheering, a lot of dead moments. You know, it just it just has a different feel. So I can see them trying to piggyback on New York City for as long as they can, you know, try to squeeze out every last bit that they can before it gets stale again, and then maybe go back to uh, Orlando. You know, it's funny, but we're talking know. about T- you know, it's funny, we're talking about TNA, but last week when Bully Ray put Dixie Carter to that table, and there was a TNA chant happening right after, the, after that. When was the last time you guys heard a TNA chant? Because it's been years since um, I heard a PWG. TNA chant. PWG, I did uh-huh. hear TNA's uh, name in there. I heard a fuck TNA chant. <laughs> Still TNA. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Is, uh, Still is TNA. TNA. I haven't heard any regular <laughs> TNA change. But yeah, it's been, it's been a while since the TNA. I swear to God, when the is probably before Hogan got there, that's probably the last time I heard a TNA chant. Because I, I swear to God, when they still had the six sided ring, and there was like more than one entrance to the, in the impact zone. I mean, I think that was the last time I heard a TNA chant. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. It, 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 this whole situation, it's so. You could say it's weird because, you know, you get you heard the reports when they first came out about Spike TV not renewing their contract with TNA, and then everybody speculating what's going to happen. Uh, real and then, quick, you know, right after this, you know, they're bringing out their best product they have in a while. You know, even though the, there's stuff on there I don't want to see. Real quick, though. You know, uh, they, they kind of overused the ECW nostalgia thing. Like, yeah. I don't know how much longer they're going to keep doing that. You know, it's like you could do it once or twice, you know, just to get the New York fans, you know, pop, you know, get some good applause, you know, do a hardcore match, get the fans excited. But when you keep doing it every single show, it starts to get old and it actually starts to get annoying. It's like you can't keep dragging this ECW thing out, you know, and, it, you know, it's cool to relive ECW. You know, they've had a big impact on the wrestling industry. But it's like enough is enough. You should focus on your company, not a past company. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do kind of like, though, about it, I mean, you can shoot me with a gun if you don't agree with me, but I kind of like the whole thing when he did brought on Snitsky and uh, Ezekiel Jackson they were representing, you could say representing the, the new ECW against the original ECW, you know. I don't know if you guys noticed yeah. that, but they're, it's like, they didn't mention Ezekiel Jackson is the last ECW champion. I'm like, holy shit. So they basically, on the Hoover and Dixie side, represent the WWE's version of ECW against the original ECW. Just Rhinos just signing with Dixie in, in there too. Rhinos like the traitor. So, yeah. I yeah, I guess um, to say something earlier. But, you know, I think, yeah, you know, they just taped, I think they just taped some more shows in New York City last week. I think it was last, either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I forget the exact days. But, um, you know, I've been hearing reports about those shows. And, you know, once again, people are saying those shows are great. You know, there's matches on there that you should, you know, when they come out on TV that you should seek out to watch. 
Um, so, you know, it's just like they keep doing all these good things, but it's like, how long is it going to last? I don't know. It doesn't matter I mean, how good the product is, man, because the ratings aren't rising. They're rising by thousands of people, and unless those ratings raise a little bit more, I mean, there's a reason why Spike isn't signing them right away. <laughs> They're getting nervous. Yeah, and I think one of the TNA's biggest mistakes is what they did with their whole thing with New Japan, you know, when they were, you know, with New Japan with that whole deal and they were sending guys over there, you know, Team 3D were the IWGP Tag Team Champions, and, you know, you had, uh, you know, Tanahashi come here, Okada come to TNA, and, you know, they severed ties with New Japan. I think that was just a huge, huge mistake. You know, New Japan was pissed off at TNA for what they did, how they screwed New Japan uh, young guys over, and, you know, they just didn't hey, have a great relationship. I'm going to say like this. And that's the, TNA's fuck up. Yeah, that's TNA fucked up on that, they, you know. They, they, burned their, so. they burned their bridges with the number two wrestling promotion in the world. And, you know, no disrespect to Wrestle 1, but imagine if TNA still had a great relationship with New Japan, what they could be doing. Shit. Eh, I just say TNA's loss is a Ring of Honor's gain. Exactly. Eh. You know, War of the Worlds and Global eh. Wars eh. were eh. both great well, choices. I want to say one more thing about TNA real quick. And it's basically, you know, the backstage's fault. You know, I mean, whoever is in charge of, you know, of, like, making decisions, they're supposed to fucking up. But, but that's who there is saying. a promotion so, out there that is making moves and smarter moves, and that is Ring of Honor. Because today, Ring of Honor actually, um, they booked uh, a, a, a big match. Which will uh, be at the All Star uh, 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 six match. It'll be uh, Red Dragon All Star Extravaganza. Yeah, Red Dragon versus the Young Bucks for the ROA Tag Titles to cut three falls. Um, two of the best tag teams in the world. What can you say they're going to steal the show? Yeah. And I haven't even seen the rest of the car yet, so I'm just excited for that. Yeah. I think and, there's know, only one other match just on. did over the weekend with the G1 Climax, you know, sending over and Red Dragon, Ring of Honor. Adam Cole, Mike Bennett, and Maria Kanellis. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, from people <laughs> that actually Great. translated, uh, there's people that translated what the Japanese announcers were saying into English, and they were praising, you know, these guys, and they were telling the backstory of, you know, their feuds when they did War of the Worlds and Global Wars. And it was like they were giving Ring of Honor so much credit and publicity, and that's going to make, you know, some Japanese fans think, man, i got to see this Ring of Honor. Even though it's all the way in America, I'm going to go online and check it out. And they've and the, the camera zoomed in on Maria Canales' ass several times, and that was just <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> that was just awesome. I said, and you I hear that Japanese guy, how did it Captain New Japan was mesmerized by Maria's ass, and I think oh, yeah. all that right. dude had a beer gut. That dude had a beer gut. The dude knew, dude knew who was what well, he was looking at for sure. He was like, "Oh my god!" And that was like the greatest. That, that match was that wasn't one of the best matches on the card, but it was still pretty good. So. Uh, I, right, gave I, a, I gave Skits a really long list. <laughs> hey, I'm yeah, sorry, I, I still got to catch up to uh, a lot of wrestling. <laughs> um, so I got. You know, the rest of the t- tonight off and then, you know, tomorrow work and then Wednesday and I should be caught up. Uh, so, so. But a lot, also, well, that, that, that Okada, that Okada of, Nakamura match is like 40 minutes, so you're ready for that. Hey, hey. Yeah, hey, it, I'm ready. Long, I'm ready to watch some fucking wrestling. I, like, these guys I, are fucking I, athletes, dude. Like, I'm ready. I gave you the best one. I, I gave you the best I mean, one for every day starting with four. <laughs> And, yeah, well, the thing is, I already seen four. I'm just, you know, we can watch two of them, and that's the Shibata um, main event matchup and uh, the, uh, the uh, AJ match. And I'll catch up to the rest, like, like, like yeah. you know. And it, I think but, it's funny because we were just talking about, you know, WWE's problems and TNA's problems. And then, you know, we just finished up with the G1 Climax, which, it was, you know, it's it's hard to watch all in one sitting. You know, if you space it out, 
even if you space it out, it seems kind of long. But I can't remember the last time I had that much fun watching. I'm not even done with it. And I'm still having so much fun watching this tournament. Uh, that right there, if you combine all 12 of those days, that was the single greatest event in wrestling history. I don't care what you put it up against. It's the single greatest event. And if you take day eight alone, it can match up with any other event in wrestling history. Yeah, by the way, speaking of the uh, G1 um, Climax 24, um, be sure to check out WrestlingHeads.com either maybe late tonight or maybe tomorrow. Uh, our boy ROH Code Chris, uh, he'll have the results and, you know, um, his thoughts or whatnot about the uh, finals, um, about uh, the New Japan uh, G1 Climax 24. Which I've enjoyed so far, and I'm not even done. Also, just like Tom said, but um, real quick, because I know we're we're like running out of time here. Uh, tomorrow, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, on WH Radio, we have Ring of Honor Superstar AC Fucking H. We'll be back here on WH Radio as we talk with him about some Ring of Honor, talk some PWG Bola, um. And much more. I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, fun having HGH back here on Wrestling Heads Radio. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, yeah. Also, For the third time. Just to, just to remind folks, Wednesday, making his first appearance here on Wrestling Heads Radio, this fucking music will be here on WH Radio. And again, Thursday, I mean, it's not Thursday, excuse me, but Saturday. Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, uh, make sure you guys listen in to WH Radio because we're going to do a Saturday show. It's a special show, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, it's going to be at the Wrestling Guy Store. Me and Oscar will be live there. Lita, Lita Hall of Famer, she will be there. And also uh, Drew Galloway, a.k.a. Drew McIntyre, will be there early in the morning. So it should be fun. Yeah, uh, make sure- yeah. Just listen on Saturday. You never know. You might get Lita on, so you just don't know. So I know we're going to be just at least five feet from her. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And, um, and shout, out to Dave, hey, shout out to Dave Gomez for, make, for making this for us. You know, he, um, we support him. He support us, you can say. And uh, and, and, uh, and his son is doing the show and, and the story. It's freaking awesome. Oh, you never know. So, we well, you know, just going to be just right there. So, <laughs> who knows what, what, what happens Saturday? So, I would listen. You never know what the, the leader will say, or maybe you should come on and just chill, chat with us. Just chill with us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um. Also, just letting you guys know, check out the website wrestlingheads.com. As usual, we have all the news for WWE, TNA, Independence, International. Uh, just check us out. Um, follow us on Twitter at wrestlingheads. We're always on our tweeting or whatnot, talking wrestling. And uh, follow me at WH Skits. Uh, by the way, I got um, my uh, weekly five coming probably tomorrow or sometime or either Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. I'm on Facebook, WH Skits. Just fucking follow me, damn it. And, um, yeah, go ahead, guys. Uh, put your plugs out. You know what? Real quick, let me let me have my boy Smart Talk, um, our guest, uh, go ahead and throw your shit out, bro. All right, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at at minus Darren. That's M I N U S D A R R I N. Apparently, people have been spelling my name wrong. Uh, and I got a YouTube channel that's far too long to repeat. So just look up Smartcast. It's one word. You'll find me there. I'll have something new lo- uploaded tomorrow, probably about Ring of Honor and NJPWG1 Climax. Oh. All right. And you can follow me at Sinister632 on Twitter and Instagram. I haven't been on Vine for a while, but I'll do something. Um, yeah, you can follow me in there. Uh Go, just go to WrestlingHeads.com. Check out my classic match of the week. I, I made one this past weekend. Uh, I actually picked 
Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk from the 2009 SummerSlam, which I was there witnessing, and I lost my voice when CM Punk won the World Heavyweight title, because I was happy. <laughs> um, check that out, and uh, check out other stuff like vlogs and results, and um, yeah, just do that, and uh, and I will be sending SmartCast and Tom a picture in a few minutes. And you can Go follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. That's all you need to know for me. But keep checking out WrestlingHeads.com. Check out ROH Code on Twitter. My name is Chris. Been doing a lot of great writing on there. Also, shout out to all the other writers on WrestlingHeads.com. I've been checking out their material. Worth the read. You're going to enjoy it. It's coming from some smart wrestling fans who know what they're talking about. Not people just spouting stuff online like most wrestling fans. WrestlingHeads.com is one of the best sources to go to if you want some smart fans because there's too many too many dumb ones out there, especially if you check Twitter and YouTube. Too many. But yeah, and we don't be- hey, we do have a YouTube guy here. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I do have a YouTube show. Uh, keep that shit uh, going. And um, yeah. Uh, by the way, um, uh, just letting you guys know, um, there is a interview that I did with a PWG regular that should be on Wrestling Heads uh, YouTube. Which go check that out and subscribe to that. That's uh, YouTube.com backslash Wrestling Heads. iTunes. We're on iTunes too. Subscribe us in there too. Um, Make sure you listen to us while you're on your way to work or whatnot. So, um, yeah. And uh, that's about it. Um, and to next, no, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm saying next week. Like, <laughs> tomorrow, oh, man. Tomorrow, man. Is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Tomorrow ACH. with ACH. Yeah. ACH. It should be fun. So, but, yeah. Um, thanks for asking for us, man. Who is Spurs? <laughs> huh? But anyway, that was like, screw his Spurs. <laughs> oh, anyway, that is a that is ACH's team. A, a, by know. the way, just to let um, Tom know a little something, a little something, something. ACH is very big on Dragon Ball Z, so you might want to, you know, if you want to throw some fun questions out there, there you go. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, uh, I don't, I don't know too much about Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I, uh, well. Oh, but we got ACH tomorrow. Beth Busey Wednesday. I'm looking forward to both of those. It should be fun. They both seem like awesome dudes. Check it out, everybody. Yes, you don't want to miss Def- that, so check it out. Definitely. Uh, shout out to Bruce, by the way. Hey, Bruce. Um, in case you listen to the show, I got four words for you. <laughs> Fuck you, suck a dick. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Rock.